Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. My name is Dr. Khalid Abu al-Bashar. I would like to welcome you all to my YouTube channel, Molecular Genetics. Uh, in this lecture, I will I'll be talking about linkage, crossing over, and recombination. I will start by talking about uh, genetic variations and sexual reproduction. We know that sexual reproduction is a very important process for the survival and continuation of multicellular organisms. Despite the asexual reproduction being a symbol and uh, a more uh, easy to carry out, and it is also uh, energy efficient and requires less time, and it also requires no mating between different organisms. But sexual reproduction is a is a, a process of uh, of choice for the multicellular organisms. Why? Because asexual reproduction will produce a genetically identical organisms. So the, the progenies from the asexual reproduction will be genetically identical to the parent cells. And that means any disadvantageous features present in the parent cell will be present in the uh, progeny cells. And therefore, if we subjected the, uh, the progenies, the, the, the daughter cells or the daughter organisms, to a condition which will harm the parent cells that means these uh, uh, these cells these progenies will will be uh, giving this a similar result as the parents so we will get a similar result with the parents and uh, the progenies while in the sexual reproduction though it is a, a uh, requires much more energy and much more time and it is a complex process and it requires two organisms to to uh, mate uh, although the process is much more complex but it is a favorable process when we talk about the survival of multicellular organisms because the sexual reproduction is actually combines the genetic material from two different organisms this will ensure a genetic variation in the progenies and the, the, uh, the genetic variation in the progeny means a, a, a phenotypic variation in these progenies which will uh, result, which will lead to a better survival chance of the different individual in the species uh, and the different environmental conditions. So the sexual reproduction will lead to a genetic variation and this genetic variation will uh, ensure that these, these, the, the different, different individuals, different individuals in the species have a better chance of surviving if, for example, this species, so the, these individuals in this species were subjected to an extreme environmental conditions. And the genetic variation in the multicellular organism actually happens uh, through a, a three different processes. The first process is through the independent orientation of chromosomes during meiosis. The other one is the crossing over of chromosomes during meiosis and the random fertilization. I will delay uh, the, uh, the explanation of, uh, explanation of uh, the first and second point to the coming uh, slide, but I will talk about the random fertilization. Random fertilization means that uh, it is not a predetermined process which, a, which a sperm will fertilize the egg. It is merely the chance which govern the process. So it is not a predetermined, it's only randomly happening that is which chrome, which uh, which uh, sperm will fertilize that egg uh, uh, regardless of uh, the set of chromosome that it carries regardless of the alleles that it carries regardless if it carries the parental set of chromosomes or it carries a new type of new set of alleles uh, what chromos what uh, sperm will fertilize uh, the egg is uh, uh, is uh, actually uh, merely happens by a chance. It's a mere random process. So let's talk about meiosis to explain and to understand uh, the independent orientation of chromosomes during meiosis and crossing over of chromosomes during meiosis. Meiosis, this part of the slide, this part, meiosis is a process 
that represent the cellular division which uh, 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 in which the genetic material is uh, reduced to the half of the genetic material of that of the parental cell so if we talk if we take for example this cell as a somatic cell in which we have a chromosome this is a paternal chromosome and this is a maternal chromosome let's say this is chromosome 1 chromosome 1 and this is chromosome 2 chromosome 2 so this is a paternal chromosome for chromosome 1 this is a maternal chromosome for chromosome 1 this and this is a maternal chromosome for chromosome 2 so this cell before it uh, enters the um, meiosis process the DNA of this chromosome should be uh, replicated so the replication of the DNA for this chromosome will result in two copies of this chromosome so a, a, these copies of chromosome will get uh, will remain attached to each other through a centromere and uh, uh, the, this chromosome also will, will have another copy and that copy will remain attached to this chromosome through a centromere and this chromosome will have the same thing will happen for these two chromosomes so when the cell enters the, mitos the meiosis it is actually a, 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 a cell that carries a, two copies of each chromosome and this structure is known as cisachromatid we have seen this in mitosis cellular division these cisachromatids normally in when the process of meiosis start the cisachromatid the homologous cisachromatid will attract each other the, this cisachromatid will attract this one and this cisachromatid will attract this one and they will attract and join each other they will get attached uh, one of the chromosomes in this sister chromatid will get attached to one of the chromosomes in this sister chromatid uh, let's see this this uh, structure here this uh, uh, image uh, for example we are talking about this chromosome and the other chromosome these are two homologous chromosomes they will get subjected to DNA replication to for this chromosome will have two copies and for this chromosome will have two copies and these two copies are actually attached together through a centromere then these this this sister chromatid these two copies and these two copies will get attracted to each other and forming a joining point between two non sister chromatid but homologous chromosomes non sister chromatid but homologous chromosomes will join together and get attached through a complex known as uh, synaptominal complex forming what is known as a chiasma and then through a process that is called a crossing over or recombination a portion of from this chromosome will get a breakdown broken down and it will uh, exchange will get exchanged with a, 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 an equal portion from the other chromosome so these two chromosomes will exchange an equal portion of their DNA so this process uh, is known as crossing over crossing over means the exchange the crossing over of two chromosomes and then the exchange of an equal portion of the chromosomes between these two non sister chromatid homologous chromosomes the crossing over also might happens between uh, a, a non homologous chromosomes and in, uh, in such a case we will end up with a mutation called translocation but now we are not talking about mutations and translocation we are talking about the normal uh, ordinary uh, crossing over that takes place between two a chromosomes of a non sister chromatid and a homologous set of chromosomes so the exchange of this amount of chrom of this part of the chromosome with this part of the chromosome is known as a, a crossover and or uh, a recombination and the resulting chromosomes are one chromosome is a non recombinant chromosome this is non recombinant this is called non recombinant because it is an intact chromosome the other one is recombinant chromosome this is called a recombinant chromosome the other one is a recombinant chromosome and the, th the fourth one is a non recombinant chromosome so by the end of the uh, 
by the end of the uh, crossing over, we will uh, get uh, two non-recombinant chromosomes and two recombinant chromosomes. But still, these two these uh, structure, the tetrad, it's also called tetrad structure, tetrad, because it is uh, it consists of four chromosomes joined together, two through the centromere and two through the uh, uh, synaptominal complex. So when the uh, in the process after the exchange take place of the uh, of uh, small parts of the chromosomes, two chromosomes will get uh, uh, they will break and rejoin a part of this chromosome. They will get exchange between the two non cisachromatid chromosomes, and then the mitotic spindles will grow and get attached to these structures. Now we'll have the spindles coming from the centrosomes and they will start to pull these uh, structures away from each other. Now this, this sister chromatid will get pulled away and this sister chromatid will get pulled away this, this way and this one will go this way and this one will go this way. So and the cell uh, by the end of the uh, movement of the chromosome when this sister chromatid reach it is uh, distinct, uh, distant uh, poles and the other one will come this side and this will come this side and this is a chromatic will come this side now the cell will uh, uh, gets divided into two cytokinesis will take place and these two cells these resulting cells will be cells with a sister chromatid still the sister chromatid are still intact structure they are not separated from each other so the whole, the only thing that happened, these chromosomes were broken apart uh, from the synaptominal complex. Now we have sister chromatid of one sister chromatid of one chromosome, and the other sister chromatid of the other chromosome going to one cell, and the other uh, sister chromatid of the first chromosome will come in once the other cell, and the second sister chromatid of the second chromosome will come to the other cell. Now we have two cells. This is the first cellular division in the meiosis. We have two cells, uh, each cell carrying two sister chromatid, carrying a sister chromatid of different chromosomes. The cell will also again uh, undergo a cellular division. Uh, again, the uh, spindles will grow and attach to the kind of core of the centromeres of this sister chromatid, as we have seen in the mitosis. And then the centromere will get split and broken down. So these two chromosomes will uh, now they are free to move away from each other. The spindles coming from this side will pull this chromosome this way, and the spindles coming from this side will pull the chromosome this way. Uh, so now we divide these chromosomes into two poles. Some of the chromosomes one chromosome of this structure will come this way and the other one will go this way and one chromosome will come this way and the other one will go this way and the same thing will happen in the second cell after the the the, the, the set of the chromosomes each set uh, reaches the uh, the pole it is respective pole now the cell will get subjected to another cytokinesis the cell will get divided into two and each cell will have a single chromosome, a single copy of a, a particular chromosome. It can be either a recombinant chromosome or a non-recombinant chromosome. So uh, uh, the cell, the single cell is divided into four and the uh, number of chromosome is reduced into half. Now we started with four chromosome and we ended up with two chromosomes in each cell. And we started with single cell and we ended up with four cells. Now, what about the independent orientation of chromosomes during my meiosis, which is one of the process through which genetic variation take place? The uh, independent orientation of chromosomes during meiosis means that it, it is not a predetermined that if a recombinant, uh, 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 it's not predetermined that one cell will carry, it will carry all the recombinant chromosomes and the other one will carry the non-recombinant. It is just a, a random process. Which cell will have which chromosome? It is not predetermined. So 
some cells will have all the non-recombinant chromosomes the other one will have all the recombinant chromosomes some will have 50% of the non-recombinant and 50% of the recombinant the other will have 50% of the or 75% of the recombinant and 25% of non-recombinant so this random process this random uh, division of chromosomes uh, uh, to this resulting cell it is a random process it is independent of any uh, factors that means the presence of a recombinant chromosomes is, is independent of the presence of a, a, another recombinant chromosome so the presence of a recombinant chromosome does not influence other chromosomes so it is an independent process the distribution of chromosomes uh, through the cells into the re, into the resulting cells the distribution of these chromosomes it is an independent process so this is one of the uh, uh, of the processes that is through which a cell ensures a genetic variation the other one is crossing over of chromosomes during meiosis crossing over we have seen the crossing over and the recombination that is a formation of recombinant chromosomes the joining of two chromosomes non-sister chromatic chromosomes and the exchange of a uh, portion of that chromosomes with uh, the exchange of portion of the chromosomes between these two chromosomes and then the formation of the recombinant chromosome so this is also will ensure a, a genetic variation this is also a process through which cell will ensure that genetic variation uh, can take place because now we started with a chromosome for example carrying an uh, small a small b and capital and uh, small a small b and small c and the other one carrying is capital a capital b and capital c and through the process of re, uh, of recombination or through the process of crossing over now we've got a new combination of small a small b and capital c and capital a capital b and small c so this is a new combination which will result in a genetic variation uh, this is the second process through which the cell will ensure that a, a recombinant uh, a DNA is a, a process is a, a way through which a genetic variation is uh, accomplished. Now we will we'll go and talk about linkage. Now we know about crossing over and what will happen during crossing over and when the crossing over will take place and the other one is the uh, distribution and, and independent distribution of these chromosomes into different cells it is also a very important process for achieving a genetic variation linkage what is linkage now to talk about linkage I think first we need to revisit uh, Mendel's second law of inheritance that is and the, the law of independent assortment in which we have seen that in the first lecture we have seen that the uh, the uh, uh, dihybrid ratio of uh, independent assortment the, the ratio that we we obtained when we studied when we studied two uh, different genes when we crossed a plant of carrying two different genes one is one with a, a, a dominant genes and the other one with recessive genes two two copies two different genes when we cross that we got the dihybrid ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 this is called a dihybrid ratio for a, an independent assortment uh, and this happens the, this ratio the dihybrid ratio which we get it in the f2 i think we, you need to uh, to watch the first lecture that I gave about Mendelian genetics, in which I talked about the three laws, or the, the laws, the, the laws of, uh, uh, of inheritance, Mendel's laws of inheritance, uh, the uh, law of segregation, law of independent assortment, and uh, law of dominance. All these laws, I, I talked about them in a, a separate lecture, so I, I think you need to go and watch that lecture to understand the dihybrid ratio. But crossing of two plants carrying when we study two genes in two plants carrying a, a one carrying the, the the genes that are in one cell one plant are are uh, dominant and the other one is carrying the recessive set of genes when we do the crossing over between two these two parent cells do 
two parents plant, we will get a, a dihybrid ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. 9 will be a dominant, uh, 3 will be a, a recombination, three, the other 3 will be recombination, and the third one, the 1 will be a recessive, completely recessive plant. This, is, this happens because genes are present on different chromosomes. So genes are present on different chromosomes and they assort independently to, form, to give us this ratio in F2 generation. And when we do a test cross between F1 generation, when we do a test cross between F1 generation and the, a, a, a double recessive plant, the test cross means that we take the F1 generation plant and we cross it with a, a double recessive uh, plant or an organism. We'll get a ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. That is 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. That is 25%, 25%, 25%, and 25%. That means the parental combination, the parental combination will be 50%. So these two, the first 25% will be a phenotype of one parent. The other 25% uh, uh, will be the, uh, 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 the phenotype of the other parent. The, this 25% will be a new uh, combination of phenotypes and this will be a new combination. So we'll end up with a parental combination of 50% and a non-parental combination of 50%. This is in case we cross two organisms carrying a, a, a two sets of genes with uh, the first one carrying a completely dominant set of genes, the other one is carrying the completely uh, recessive set of genes when we cross them together we will get a, a, an F1 generation. The F1 generation will be a mixture between the a, a, a recessive and the dominant. But the phenotype will be of the dominant phenotype. Now, this organism, this generation, this progeny of the F1 generation, if we cross that organism in the F1 generation with another organism that carries a double recessive gene, if we cross them together, then what we will get in the F2 generation or the test cross ratio will be 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. Or 50% of the phenotype will be a parental combination and the, uh, the other 50 will be a non-parental combination. So this is a normal uh, ratio that we get when we talk about the independent assortment. When the genes get independently assorted and normally when these genes are present in different chromosomes. I have explained that in more in details in the uh, lecture of, uh, genetic, uh, of Mendelian genetics. Now genes do not normally, assort, not, not all genes are assorted independently. Genes do not assort independently. That means different ratio in F2 generation and test cross. If genes do not assort independently, now we have some cases in which genes do not assort independently. They do not get distributed independently in the uh, gametes. When the formation of the gametes in F1 generation take place, some genes do not get uh, distributed independently. They don't get uh, assorted independently in the, gam in the different gametes. So in such a case, we will not get a similar ratio will not get the 9 into 3 into 3 into 1. Or if we did a test cross, we will not get a 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. 50% of the parents and 50% of the new, com new combination. So what happens? What happens? How, how scientists came to know about this linkage? Uh, a two scientists, uh, Peterson and uh, Panet, they studied a, a sweet pea. And they found a, in they did cross crossing of a plant of sweet pea, and they got in the F1 generation a totally different result from what Mendel got uh, from the dihybrid ratio. They got result uh, totally dif different from the nine is to one is to nine is to three is to three is to one. And when they did the test cross, they got another result that is totally different from the ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. And they actually attributed that to what they later called a coupling and repulsion phenomenon. They said that if uh, we crossed two plants uh, and we studied a, a two genes in these two plants, 
the first plant carrying both genes are dominant and the other one carrying both genes are recessive so when the F1 generation the in F1 generation when we cross this and we get the F1 generation the, the formation of the gametes in the F1 generation both the alleles will enter the same gamete so they call this a coupling that is a crossing between two two plants or two organisms carrying one carrying both genes are dominant the other one carrying both genes are recessive in the, in the formation during the formation of the gametes in the F1 generation both alleles will enter a single gamete so they call this a, 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 a coupling while the repulsion they said when we cross one plant carrying a dominant gene and a recessive gene one, the other one uh, carrying the uh, the first gene in the first plant if we cross two plants the first plant carries the first gene dominant the second gene recessive while the second plant carrying the first gene recessive and the second gene dominant when we do such crossing the F1 in the F1 generation the gametes of the F1 generation the alleles will not enter the same uh, gametes so they will get spread in, in the gametes so they said this is called a repulsion but later on Morgan they did this in 1905 Morgan in 19 uh, that is Thomas Hunt Morgan uh, in 1910 he did a similar uh, uh, experiment with uh, Drosophila melanogaster, that is fruit flies, and he got a, a result which is uh, deviating, completely deviating from the 9 is to 9, 9 is to 3 is to 3, from the dihybrid ratio, which is 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. And he called this uh, deviation from the dihybrid ratio, he called it a linkage. That means when these genes under study are linked together so they do not get assorted they do not get uh, distributed into different uh, gametes and instead they get uh, passed or they get inherited together so he called this a linkage and he proposed he supposed that uh, the tendency of linked genes to remain in their original combination is due to their presence in the same gene he said that some genes are linked together, so they get inherited together. They do not get assorted independently. And these genes, the tendency of these linked genes to get inherited together is due to their presence in the same chromosome. So he proposed that uh, the linked gene must be present in the same chromosome so that they do not get assorted. Instead, they get, inhibit, they get inherited together. And he said that the strength of this linkage, the linkage between these two genes, the strength of this linkage is due, uh, is normally depends, this, this strength normally depends on the distance between these two genes. So if the genes are close to each other, so they, the strength, the linkage strength is, uh, is very high, and when these genes are separated apart, the, the strength of the linkage strength is much much less so what is linkage linkage is that the, the two genes under study will get uh, passed together or they'll get inherited together so the presence of this gene determines uh, or influence the presence of the other gene so this is called linkage and this is happens because these two genes are close to each other when these two genes get separated. For example, this is gene 1 and this is gene 2. Now we have a space between these two genes. And we, in the, in the meiosis here, we said that there is a, a recombination might take place, a crossover. So, for example, if we have a gene here, let's go to this. Yeah, for, for example, in this gene, if we are talking about gene 1 in this chromosome, gene 1 and gene 2, now a crossover might take place anywhere in this region so the chance of a crossover to happen between these two genes is much much larger than, than the chance of a crossover to take place between these two genes and statistically it's known that the probability of a crossover to, to happen at any point in the chromosome is the same so there is a probability of a crossover to take place here or here or here or any at any point in the chromosome 
so the probability is the same at any any point in the chromosome therefore there is a single probability that a, a, a crossover might take place between these two genes but when we talk about these two genes which are separated away from each other so we have a probability of a crossover to take place here or here or here or any at any point in this so the crossover might take place here the chance of this crossover to take place here is much larger than the chance of a crossover to take place here between these two genes so these two genes are said to be linked because normally they are inherited together because um, uh, the possibility of a crossover to take place here is very less while these two genes are said to be not linked because the probability of a crossover to take place here is very much larger and when we talk about two different genes in two different chromosomes so they are uh, understandably they are not linked so the, the inheritance of this chromosome does not determine the inheritance of the other chrom chromosomes so this is what we what he what he did this is what uh, thomas hunt morgan uh, when he studied and he got a different result from what Mendel got in uh, in his law of uh, independent assortment, he actually attributed this deviation from the the dihybrid ratio to a linkage of genes that are genes are linked together, and he said that he called this phenomena a linkage, and he he actually supposed that. The tendency of these two genes to get inherited together because they are present in their present clause in a, a, a same chromosomes and the strength of this linkage is the, the, uh, determined by the distance between these two genes when this when the distance increases the linkage is a, a weaker linkage so the, uh, the, the genes are said to be linked uh, strongly when they are closer to each other while, while when two genes are uh, distantly apart that is the linkage is very weak or sometimes they they don't have any linkage at all if the, if the distance is very large though they are present in the same chromosome so I'll talk about an example of linkage uh, a scientist called Hutchison Hutchison he crossed a, a variety of maize, two varieties of maize. One plant had a, a colored seeds, colored and filled out seeds. So in the first plant, the parent plant, the first parent plant had a colored and filled out seeds. And this is a, the colored seeds were a dominant uh, phenotype. And the filled out seeds also dominant phenotype so he gave the colored genes the colored uh, character a capital C capital C a do dominant and the filled out seed uh, capital S capital S when he crossed this with a colorless this is a recessive and shrunken seed recessive recessive he crossed a dominant dominant with a recessive recessive these are the parents now this is a dominant dominance capital C capital C capital S capital S he crossed this plant with a small C small C small S small S these are the parents when he crossed he got in the F1 generation capital C with capital S and a small C with a small S so the parents will carry this genotype so the genotype will be F, F1 F1 generation not the parent the F1 generation will carry this genotype capital C small c capital S small s so this is, will be the combination in the uh, uh, F1 generation the whole the all, all the organisms will be carrying this genotype while the, the phenotype will be colored and full because the dominant uh, allele will uh, get expressed so the the phenotype will be full and colored while the genotype in the F1 will be uh, c capital c s small c small s capital now uh, if if these two genes the color and the 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 the, the fullness of the seed if the genes responsible for these two characters are assorted independently they are not linked if they are not linked together so uh, as in the second law of, in, of inheritance the gametes of f1 generation would would be one gamete will carry c capital 
S capital. The other will carry C capital. S small. The, th the, the third will carry C small S capital. And the last one will carry uh, C small S. So all the combination will be present. Now if we did a test cross. Test cross that is F1 generation F1 plant with a double recessive plant with this plant. So if we crossed an F1 plant with a double recessive plant in the test cross, the, uh, if we got a, a 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 ratio, that means the, the two genes are assorted, they are not linked and they, they got assorted independently. But if we got something other than 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1, this ratio, that means the genes are not assorted independently. So in F1, when he when in the test cross when he crossed the f1 the, with a double uh, recessive parent with this one the f1 is carrying this genotype and he crossed that with this genotype uh, so we expect a 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 now 25 percent will be carrying the this uh, genotype 25 percent of the plant will be carrying uh, the product of this cross between the F1 and the recessive, double recessive, 25% will be carrying this uh, genotype. And the other 25 will be carrying this genotype. So this is a parental genotype. And this is a, another parental genotype. So 50% of the plant will be carrying the parental genotype. The other one will be carrying a new combination. That is... A capital S with a small s and capital S with a small s. Okay, this is will be a new, this is 25 will be carrying this. And the other 25, the 25, we said that the first 25% of the plants will be carrying this genotype. The other 25% will be carrying the other genotype. The third 25% of the plants will be carrying capital C with a small s and, and capital C with a small s. So it will be C, C capital and small C, S, S is small. This is a new combination. This is not present here, on, or neither here or not there. So this 25% will be capital C, 2 capital C and 2 small s. The last combination, the last non-parental combination will be small C, small C with capital S, capital S. So we'll have 50% of the parental uh, phenotype and 50% uh, 50 per, 50 of the parental phenotype and 50% of a non-parental phenotype, new phenotypes, new combination. So Hutchison, what he got after, this is if the, uh, the two genes are uh, sorted independently. But Hutchison, what he got, the result of Hutchison were 96.4% were parental. So most of the most of the plants showed either this phenotype or this phenotype. 96.4% showed a parental combination, while 3.6% showed a new recombination. So this is totally different than the 50% 50%. So these genes were not assorted independently. They were not independently assorted. These genes because the result showed the uh, the ratio showed deviation. Huge deviation from the uh, the expected results of the second law of independence, the hybrid ratio. So, in the case of the hybrid ratio, the assorted, the, the independently assorted genes, we must get a 50% parental and 50% new combination. But here we got 96.4% parental and 3.6% uh, recombination. So, he, what he said, this is not an independently assorted uh, genes. Now, we know that deviation of the test cross ratio, that is, uh, if we did any cross and we did the test cross uh, or for that uh, uh, hybridization, and we got a, a deviation in our result from the 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1, that means there is a very big chance there is a linkage between these two genes. So these two genes are linked. They are not independently assorted. So the, to determine whether these two genes are linked or not, we will check, check out for the, uh, uh, the test cross ratio. 
if you got a similar ratio like 1 is to 1 is to 1 or to 50 to 50 that means there is a very big chance that is linkage is there between these two genes there is other there is other reason for the deviation from of the test scores from the 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1 this is due to the chance so a deviation of the test cross result from the ratio of 1 is to 1 is to 1 can either be due to chance or due to linkage either these two genes are linked together so they are they do not get uh, assorted independently or there is a due to the chance that we got this result it's not actually the, the genes are linked so how can we make sure that uh, our results our genes under study are linked but not the result that we've, we've got uh, this is not due to the chance we cannot rely on the ratios alone we cannot rely on uh, if we got a ratio deviating from this ratio we cannot just depending on that relying on that we can say this is the means that there is a linkage between these two genes we said that chance also uh, play a, a role in this so we cannot rely alone we cannot rely on the ratios alone to determine if this deviation is significant significant deviation means due to linkage or not significant due to chance so uh, deviation from the ratio alone cannot be used cannot be used though it is an indication of a linkage but it, it um, may be a chance also uh, or this deviation also may be due to chance so what we use, we normally use a chi-square test, a statistical test known as a chi-square test to determine if the deviation is significant, deviation from this ratio is significant. Our result gave uh, a deviation from this ratio. If this deviation is significant, that means this is due to linkage. That means these genes under study are linked. Or if the deviation is not significant, that means uh, the result that we have got uh, is due to the chance, but the genes are not linked. So, uh, chi-square test is a statistical test that measures the goodness of fit between the observed and the expected result. Now we have our result, our result, the result that we get from the test, and we have the expected result. This is ra this ratio of 50-50 percent. So now. If, uh, if we use the chi-square test, the chi-square will test, will measure the goodness of fit, whether our result actually fits this ratio or not. So we can determine this using chi-square test. So let's see an example of that. To do the chi-square test for checking the linkage of genes or not, we need to first set the parameters for chi-square. The parameters, the first parameter to be set is the null hypothesis. We need to state the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis for our test is there is no difference between the observed and the expected result. So this will be our hypothesis or null hypothesis that there is no difference between the observed and the expected result. Or we can rephrase this null hypothesis in the way that no linkage between the genes and their study. So we can say this is the null hypothesis no deviation between the observed our result and the expected the uh, dihybrid ratio result that means there is no linkage so we can also say the null hypothesis you can state the null hypothesis in the way that no linkage between the genes and their study or we can also rephrase the null hypothesis in the way that no deviation from this ratio one is to one is to one or 50 percent 50 percent so this is our null hypothesis either no, di no difference between observed or expected or there is no linkage between the genes under study or, or there is no deviation from the, the hybrid ratio or the cross test ratio uh, test cross ratio so the other the other parameter that we need to set is the degree uh, of freedom the degree of freedom is a very important uh, a value that is used to interpret the result of chi-square so we have to know our degree of freedom in this study for this test the degree of freedom is normally the number of groups that the data can be classified into minus one so our data can either be our data the results as we have seen here the data can either be a parental or recombination 
a parental data or non-parental data. So our plant, if we crossed a plant or animals together and we have seen, we collected the data, so we will see the phenotype. The phenotype can either a parental phenotype or non-parental phenotype. So we have two groups. So degree of freedom is the number of groups that the data can be classified into. How many groups we can classify the data into? We have only two groups, either parental or non-parental, or parental or recombinant. So we have two groups, minus one. So we have two minus one. So data can be grouped into two groups, parental combination and non-parental combination. So the degree of freedom equals two minus one. Two minus one, two groups, minus one, that is one. So the degree of freedom for this test is one. Normally for linkage, the degree of freedom is one. Now we go for an example for this, how to use the chi-square to determine whether these two, two genes are linked or not. If we, if we carried out a, two experiments, two experiments of test cross uh, and F1, if we crossed a two, 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 for example, two organisms, two, two animals or two plants or two insects, and then we got the F1 generation, and then we crossed the F1 generation with a double recessive uh, organism, and uh, this is the F1 generation, C, capital C, small, uh, capital S, uh, C, small C and small S, crossed with a double recessive, this is the test cross, and we, if, we, if we obtain the following results, for example, this is experiment 1, this is, exp this is a result for experiment 2, this is the genotype, now the genotype, how can we determine the genotype, for example, if we are talking about the maize plant, and uh, we, we, we crossed a plant that is carrying a seed which are colored seeds with a full seed that colored means capital C capital C and full seed is capital S capital S with a plant that is uh, colorless small c small c with a shrunken seed that is small s small s and we got the F1 generation this is a generation F1 generation and then we crossed this F1 generation with the plant that carry a colorless seed with a shrunken seed that is small s, small c with a small s. So uh, now we get the result. We see our results, our plants uh, from this uh, uh, crossing, this hybridization. If the f if if the plant showed seeds, colored seeds with a full colored and full seeds, that means this is a genotype, capital C and capital S. So the genotype, when we, when we see a plant carrying a colored seed, because colored seed is due to the capital S, and full seed is due to the capital S. This is a dominant for colored seeds, and this is a dominant for uh, 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 full seeds. So the plant that shows uh, uh, full seeds and colored seeds, they have the genotype of uh, C uh, capital and S capital. So, for example, if you've got 15 plants that shows a color seed and full seed. And if we, sh if we had, for example, and we got plant that, 13 plants that carrying a colorless seed with shrunken seed. <coughs> so, for example, these are just results. Uh, for just an example, if we say that we've got 15 plants carrying seeds, full seeds and color seeds, that means they have a genotype of capital C and capital S, and we got a 15, a 13 plant that are carrying a colorless seeds with shrunken seeds, so they have this genotype, and 10 plants that are carrying colored seeds but shrunken seeds, colored and shrunken seeds, so they were 10, and 12 of the plants were colorless seeds but full seeds. So now we have four combination. This one is completely colored and filled out seeds. This is colorless and shrunken seeds. This, this genotype for colored seeds and shrunken seeds. This is for colorless and filled out seeds. So this is a parental. This is a parental genotype. If you talk about parents, when we, when we, for example, the same. Uh, uh, this is what we've seen. The parents will be all carrying, one parent will be carrying capital and capital. So capital S, capital S. And the other will be carrying small, uh, capital C, capital C. And the other one will be carrying a small C and a small S. 
So the parents, this, this is a combination of the parents, this is a genotype of the parent, one parent, this is a genotype of the other parent. So in our result, one parent is carrying capital C and capital S. So this is a parent uh, genotype. This is also another parent genotype. So these two are the parent genotypes. These are new. This is new genotype and this is new genotype. So now we have two parent genotypes and two new genotypes. Two parents genotype and two recombinant. So we go for first or for first ex experiment. We got 50 uh, plants. Out of these 50, 15 were showing the parent genotype. The other 13 showing another parent genotype. The 10 showed a combination. The 12 also showed another new combination. So we'll now calculate things. We'll see the observed and the expected. For the parental genotype, we have the parental genotype. These two showing the parental genotype. How many we observed we, our, in our test? In our test, we, in our experiment, we got uh, 15 plus 13. All showed the parental genotype. So 28. 28 of our 50 plants showed a parental genotype. This is observed. Expected. So we expect how much? According to the dihybrid ratio and the test cross ratio, we said that 50%, 50%. For, for the independent assortment, we should expect that 50% of the plant show the parental and 50% of the plant show the recombinant. So 50% of the plant should show this is expected. We should expect 50% of the plant show a, 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 the parental and the other 50 shows the uh, recombinant. So 50, half of the plant, 50%, half of the 50 is 25. So we expect that 25, we expect it, 25 should show the parental and the other 25 should show the recombinant. But what we've got, we've got, a, a, we've gotten 28 showed the parental and 22 showed the recombinant. So now how can we make sure if these two genes are linked or not? We go and apply the results to the a chi square equation. Now, this is chi, chi square equation that is chi square equal to the sum of the observed minus the expected square or upon the number of the expected observation. So, sum means both. Uh, we do the same for parental uh, and for the recombinant. So, we do for the parental and the recombinant and then we add the result for both. So, this is sum addition. For, for experiment one, the parental the observed were 28 and the expected we just, we just go back the observed for the parental these were 28 and the expected we expected before the, the experiment we expected 25 but here here the parental for the parental 28 were observed and minus 25 according to the, the to the formula 28 observed minus 25 expected upon 25 number of expected so 28 minus 25 this is 3 3 square that is 9 9 upon 25 that is a 3.6 upon 0.36 point 36 9 divided by 25 plus 22 for the recombinant Combinant we have seen observed 22 and minus expected 25 divided by 25. So 22 minus 25 square divided by 25. So we get the final result is 0.72. So this is a chi square. This is a value of for chi square. So how can we make sure that according to this value that our genes are linked or not? We go to the uh, the uh, what is known as the table of critical chi-square values. We have a table, statistical table, very much known, known as the critical chi-square values. In this table, first, normally, statistically, we, uh, we use a confidence interval of 0 0.05. This is statistically known. That is, most of the tests are carried with a confidence interval, uh, with a confidence level of uh, uh, 0.05 that is we are confident in our 
result a 95%. We cannot say 100%, but we can accept a 95% as a confidence level. So now we said that we normally agree about on a 0 0.05 confidence level or 95% confidence level. So now we have a 95% confidence level and our result is 70, uh, uh, a, a, a 0.72. 0.72, this is a critical value, we got it from the calculations. And now, and we remember that our degree of freedom, the degree of freedom we've got for this experiment were one, was one. So now the degree of freedom one. When the degree of freedom one, we'll, we'll consider this, these readings. When the degree of freedom, we, we calculate the degree of freedom and we get it two equal to two, we consider these readings. And when it is three, we consider these readings. So now our, our degree of freedom is one. So we'll, we'll consider these readings as our critical chi-square values. So this is, these are the readings. What about the confidence level? We agreed on a 0.05 confidence level. So this is the reading. For the 0.05, the reading will be uh, 3.84, provided that your, your degree of freedom is 1. So our degree of freedom is 1, and our confidence level is 0.05. So this is the critical value for chi-square. Anything more than this value, any value, greater than this value, we will reject the null hypothesis. We will reject the null hypothesis. Anything less than this, we will accept the null hypothesis. So our value, the, the uh, chi-square value is 0.72, which is less than this. So we'll accept the null hypothesis. We will accept the null hypothesis. Now we go back to our null hypothesis. We already set the null hypothesis, and the null hypothesis would say no difference between the observed and expected, or it would say no linkage between the genes and their study. So according to our results, the result that we got from the chi-square, we said that we accept the null hypothesis, and the null hypothesis says that there is no linkage between the genes and their study. So in this experiment, the gene C, with gene C, and, and the gene S, they are not linked. How can we know that? Because we got a result that is less than the critical value for chi-square uh, under the confidence level of 0.05. So, uh, and that we accept the null hypothesis, and the null hypothesis says that no linkage between these genes. And we are, we are confident of our, uh, we are 95% confident of our Results. We are 95% because we have chosen 0.05 as the confidence level. We are 95% confident on our results that these two Gs are not linked. Now let's go again and see the second experiment. For example, if we did a similar experiment in a larger number of plants, different plants or whatever, and we got this, these results. So for the uh, for the uh, parental genotype, this first genotype, we got a 30, 30, uh, 34 plant showing this genotype, and 28 showing the other genotype, 16 showing this recombinant genotype, and 22 showing uh, the last recombinant genotype. So the observed uh, genotype, this is the addition of the both uh, parental genotype for parental, we got a 26, that is 30, uh, 34 plus 28, 32, uh, 62, 62 were showing the parental genotype, and uh, 38 were showing the recombinant, the new recombinant genotypes, these two, 16 plus 22, and what we expected, we expected half of the plant to show the parental and half to show the, uh, 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 the recombinant, because we said 50-50, and that is a half of the 100 means 50. So we expected 50 to show the parental and 50 to show the uh, 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 recombinant. Because we said 1 is to 1 is to 1 is to 1. So 25 here, 25, 25, 25. So these two are 25, 25, that is 50. And these two, 25, 25, that is 50. So 50 and 50. This is expected. Now we go and apply the uh, chi-square equation. The observed for the parental, 62 minus 50. The expected to observe minus the expected that is uh, 62 minus 50 square up, uh, divided by 50 plus 
for the recombinant, we've got 23, uh, uh, 38, 38 minus uh, 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 50 square uh, divided by 50, and we got the result, the final result as 5.76. This is the chi square for this experiment. So now we go and interpret our results for the second experiment. We go and we we we, we agree that the confidence level that we will be using normally in the statistical test, uh, we statistician recommend that to use a 0 0.015, 0 0 0.05. Some would some would use 0 0.01, and some you some other will use a 0 0.001. So we will use a 0 0.05 as our confidence level. And we said that uh, our uh, degree of freedom is 1. So we'll just go for the uh, row that is uh, correspond to a 1 degree of freedom, this row. And we, we agreed on a confidence level of 0 0.05. So this is our critical value of chi-square. And as I said, if anything more than this value, anything greater than this value, we reject the null hypothesis. And anything less than this, we will accept the null hypothesis. So our value, the chi-square value, is 5.76. And this is much more than 3.84. So we will reject the null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis, we will reject the null hypothesis. So the null hypothesis will go back to the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis said that no linkage between these genes, the genes and their study. And we will reject that. So that means there is linkage between the genes and their study. So now in the second experiment, we find that there is linkage between the genes and their study. While in the first experiment, we got that there is no linkage between these genes and their study. And in the first experiment, we can attribute the deviation of our result from this ratio due to the chance. And the second experiment, we can attribute the, the deviation of our result from this ratio, from the test cross ratio, is due to the linkage of the genes. So the genes are not uh, uh, sorted independently. So that is uh, all uh, I can say about linkage, uh, crossing over, and recombination. Thank you so much.